Okay, Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Uh, I have listened and read some reports from you uh, for the midterm project. Um, uh, and what I can concluded is uh, some of you have uh, misunderstood my instruction but but uh, at least you have conducted more than 50% of my instruction so uh, I can manage it but unfortunately uh, it will cause less uh, score for you and then the other things I have underlined uh, when I gave the instruction was uh, I, I was highly uh, suggesting you all to conduct the interview in English so you can practice and develop your English while doing the interview and the other things I uh, noted from some of your works uh, for example, some of you didn't send complete uh, files, for example, sending only the, the document but not the recorded file. Uh, and the other was trying to, I'm not sure whether he, wh whether he or she uh, conducted a real or fake interview, so it. Uh, I I I I I could um, like uh, imagine or what kind of in what kind of interaction might happen yeah, in a real interview. Uh, since I have uh, experienced so many interviews during my career as a lecturer. And then the other thing is, uh, uh, some of you have uh, developed very good questions and got uh, proper responses from your interviewee, but uh, unfortunately, uh, uh, your presentation on your document, working document, was not. Uh, well, well presented. Uh, I'm not sure whether you failed to understand the statements or you failed to elaborate your finding based on your interview. So, uh, I was expecting you to get um, like uh, not only providing me the answer several questions you address to the interview. Uh, what I wanted from your interview was I, I want to see how how critical you, you grab some points from your interview and that you make your your perspective based on the data of your interview. So it's not like uh, retelling the story, but it's like uh, giving your perspective. It's a critical perspective. It's not about. It's not like uh, some of you only gave me uh, your opinion, but about the person or about what he did or what she did in the classroom. But you you didn't give. Uh, critical perspective on how uh, by relating your the data to your readings previous reading with me in my course so uh, but some of you have, uh, have made it have made that far so I feel happy for some of you uh, and then unfortunately some of your friends failed to to was it to submit the the project 
before the the deadline, so I'm not sure how to have them to pass my course. Okay. Uh, today I will I will talk about teach for learning for a slide uh, uh, only for a slide uh, few because uh, I believe you have read the the whole uh, PowerPoint presentation that I have sent to you last week. Okay, uh, uh, teach for learning means you don't teach the material as the main goal of your teaching. Actually, teach for learning refers to uh, an activity from the teacher that facilitate or give chances to to students to learn, not to grab information or to get your idea about some issues, but but they have to you have to manage them to learn. Okay? Learning is a process of uh, acquiring knowledge, skill, also to apply it and to feel the the real or the illustration of phenomena that happened outside, okay, outside the, or in real life. Okay, so uh, that's why uh, a philosopher named Sophilus uh, says that the reasonable thing is to learn from those who can teach. I still remember when uh, uh, Einstein says that if you cannot make a simple explanation towards a thing, it means you don't understand the, the thing. So, uh, to to indicate your understanding about a thing or issue or knowledge or particular part of a course is in your ability to simplify the explanation. It means you don't make it more complex. You make it simpler and easier to be understood by your students. That is that it. Uh, that is one thing in teaching. So another, uh, what is referred by who can teach it, is you, you, you can facilitate your students to experience, to have, a, to have a, the best level of experience so they can, they can decide and develop whatever they want to do with their, their, their activities and their, the knowledge and then what what can they do after the, the learning taking place. So, so like uh, Einstein uh, says, to, what what is education? Education is something remains uh, in, in in your student's mind after the class over. It means what remains in their mind and their understanding in their brain in their perspective is the is what we call as education so what as a teacher whatever you say is whatever you explain whatever you you ask them to do inside the classroom but if you don't give uh, like a, what do you call it as a um, it something that something that they can remember in their mind, and something that can they can believe, something they can use after after the the learning session. So you fail to provide education. So education means you you lead your students into valuable experience, and they will bring the experience into real life. That, that is education. Okay, next. Uh, 
Uh, so we teach to change the learner, and we have not taught unless learning has taken place. So, so it's not teaching. It's not even teaching if you if you fail to lead your students to learn. Learning is the key keyword of your prof, of your job as a teacher, uh, and then uh, Lemson says the teaching is done by someone and not to someone. So, by someone means, uh, yes, yes, you do your job as a teacher, but you don't do teaching to someone, but you, you teach as someone and you lead uh, some people, which is uh, which are your students, to experience uh, uh, your uh, plan of learning. Uh, the connection between teaching and learning is a transformational concept supported by academic social spiritual connection. So, to conduct a good classroom, it means you have to be good in three dimensions of teaching. The first one is academic, uh, means you are good, you have a good vision about the content, the science, or whatever you want to do with the, the, the goal of learning. And then the social means you as a teacher, you have to develop a positive social interaction between you and your students. And spiritual means uh, you have uh, uh, a kind of faith as a teacher that brings you to a responsible person uh, to consider uh, what stages, what step, what plan you want to go with your students, but you have to to be a spiritual teacher means you keep in your mind, in your brain, in your heart that this is a, a this is a, a a job that needed by 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 the society and that you take responsibility of being a teacher and uh, it's not simply about transferring knowledge to your student, but you have a faith, you have your faith and your moral as a teacher that lead you to um, transformation or teaching, okay? And then, uh, you know, um, so there is an obvious difference between instructional paradigm and learning paradigm. Uh, in instructional paradigm, Use knowledge as existing out there. So, when you go with instructional paradigm, you 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 teach your students as if you are separated from the real world. It's like uh, you 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 bring them into a nowhere uh, point or nowhere place. And then you tell them about something happened outside of the place. So it's like imagining uh, a place or things which is, uh, that that is far from you, maybe. So it's hard for the students to see the the real situation because as an instructional teacher, you you bring them uh, separated with their with the real life so so the knowledge existing out there not here okay? not during the learning while the learning paradigm is knowledge is how our individual experience it it, it experience will shape uh, the knowledge of the students. So bring them experience to create their knowledge. Okay. Uh, okay, you can read this later, the purpose of, the purpose of standards. Uh, so out there and in here are the different paradigms of instructional teaching and what we call as a learning paradigm. Okay. Okay, what a teacher should have. Uh, to be a teacher, you just 
you have to have a, you have to make a commitment about your effort and belief in your students' abilities. You know? Learners commit effort, openness, and a desire to succeed. You will have to commit effort and belief and a belief about your students' abilities. You know? So never start your class by underestimating your students to any of your students. Uh, okay, so uh, you should be uh, okay. you should uh, give them uh, you should encourage them to engage with your learning and you should believe them that, that they have the, their potential to move forward and to follow your 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 design by giving them chance to experience. Okay. Uh, okay. Uh, uh, back to our discussion. Um, big change in our education today uh, so as a, a future teacher you have to be aware of changing in our civilization students today need an extraordinary knowledge base in the process skills to find and use relevant information why because in this in this era information uh, uh, are provided easily and huge. You can access information from anywhere with any kind of uh, tools with uh, whoever you are uh, the the system our <clears throat> our system online system almost uh, doesn't care who you are where are you where are you from and whatever your, your job is. They provide as much as you need on, on, on the internet. So that's why <clears throat> the today's students need <clears throat> next step. You have to provide skills for them to find and use relevant information. <clears throat> and they have they also need skill to evaluate information with a value system uh, with a value system that deals with social and ethical service so it's different challenge for current teacher you know, what kind of things they need to uh, wear okay <clears throat> and then uh, once again, we have to remember that the learner is the center of the model. Yeah? Informational teaching informs the teacher behavior. Um, that's why uh, whatever uh, our decision to bring the classroom to learn learner center classroom, but however, your personal, your personal. Uh, Provide or your persona is, is something important yeah. <coughs> uh, <coughs> because uh, the way they see you, the way they perceive you, your behavior, your attitude, your, your appearance may influence their decision about how they will they, how they will listen to you, okay, and how they will do the your instruction and how much they learn. So uh, remember your persona or your, your your appearance as a teacher is something still important in this era. And then uh, okay, you can read this uh, connect and transfer. Uh, uh,
So you have to demonstrate. You you have to give them chance for them to demonstrate their new perspective in their own language. You know? <clears throat> so uh, the confrontation and transfer can be academic, social, and spiritual in context. Uh, for example, we give them chance to to be in a middle of a case and then you encourage them to to imagine it and then make a critical statement about the issue. Okay, it's it's a it's like it's like giving them chance to 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 analyze things out there. And they have to activate their prior knowledge, means your students are not dual persons. It means they they are not empty uh, uh, cup. They have filled in their, their their mind and their brain, their perspective with their experiences from prior school maybe, from family, from friendship, neighborhood and so on. So uh, if you want to give them chance to, uh, to experience uh, best learning practice, you have to give them chance to, to access or to activate the prior knowledge. That will give big impact to your class and then priorities okay that's a simple thing okay experiences transformation is experience learning is the goal of teaching so learning is the goal of teaching means you you don't have to go directly to the achievement of the students. First, you have to make sure that learning takes place. It means your position as a teacher has a responsibility to make sure that your students have experience learning. Okay? Uh, so it's not simply about or their understanding, their ability, their capacity. But the first thing, first comes first, is to make sure learning takes place. Okay. Uh, okay. You can create things, meet and try. And students in the center of teaching. Okay? Uh, not. It's not about mutually of trust, but also obligation for teachers to understand it. So it's not only about you trust them about their capacity, but also you have to understand how they, how they students, you know, how, how students learn. You know? Understanding. Uh, so as a teacher, you have to be very critical about this. You know? Is typical of students or what have what should I do with her or with her? Okay. Um, teaching is about knowing who we teach, knowing the audience is important. Because teaching is more than telling. And covering curriculum and standard is the least difficult aspect of teaching. So if you want to pursue the curriculum and fulfill the standard, they are the simplest, it's not really difficult to, to reach that. It's not the real, the real job of teacher actually, okay? because uh, we cannot imagine how different one classroom to another classroom, one school to another classroom, or among schools in one city or different city or even different nations. So, how can we over generalize them by by only following the curriculum and the standards? 
but you fail to to prepare your students to to face their future. Yeah. So it's not the 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 the, the main ideas of teaching. The main ideas of teaching is to make them learn. And different level of achievement among learners are something acceptable. So you don't have to make them into uh, into robots. They have to have same similar understanding, similar skills, similar capacity. No, no, no. That's not the idea of true education. Okay, uh, knowing and engaging students. First, you have to know your students, and then you have to make them engage. Uh, it means you have to collaborate, have to value the skills to work with others. Uh, teachings, conventional wisdom with facts of potential. So, thank you for your attention uh, today. So, uh, this is a recorded lecture from me discussing the last PowerPoint uh, that I have distributed last week about teach for learning. So I will close my lecture by uh, citing one of the many favorite John Hall. He says, Learning is not the product of teaching. Okay. Learning is the product of the activity of the learners. So learning. Here yeah, is part of your students, but you have to facilitate that learning must happen inside the classroom. Okay, I think that's all. Thank you for your very kind attention. I'll see you soon. And bye bye, Kitan. Assalamualaikum.